true story. These are people she knew. Some of them was her classmates. Some of them was her friends' friends or whatever. Eight guys. And then you wonder why she got an attitude. Well, why would she not? But see, but her attitude was going back. As more I talked to her, I realized like, she wouldn't be married just like this, just like all of us. She wouldn't have a name. She wouldn't be loved. She don't know how. She don't know how to let her guard you down. She don't, know, she don't know if I can trust the man. I don't know if I can. So this 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 the same lady. She said that what happened is after she was told her story to me. What do we do? Everybody's shouting at her. They talk about her. So not only did she go through this, because now that she's being raped all over again. Y'all, we got to stop it. Let's embrace one another. Let's love one another. If you know your sister's going through something, help them. Encourage them. Talk to them. See what they need. And I'm not saying sit back and, okay, if you need me, praise the Lord, let me. I'm saying go to your sister and reach out. You know, one time, I remember when, I, when my house was uh, hit by a tornado one time, this girl came up to me, didn't know me from Adam, and this girl put a hundred dollar bill in my hand. She didn't have to say, do you need any money? My house just got hit by a tornado. You, you know, do that. Because see, that was, and, and you know what, she went on. I never, to this day, don't know who she is. I don't remember. Because it wasn't about that. It was about, I seen a sister in need, and I helped her. And that's what we have to do. That's what we have to start getting back to. One of the girls, her mother, her mother told her that she was not loved. That no man was ever loved. Can you imagine your own mother? Okay, now I'm gonna bring it on home. When I was about, see, I, I, I'm not just talking. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it's true. When I was about five years old, I was watching Tina one day. I was there. She said, she was with some people. One of them had the Diane Carroll, y'all need to stick. So back then, you know, you had the Diane Carroll in the horn look. Then you had the edge of Mama Buckley. So, okay, it's sad to say that the Lena Horn Diane Carroll was beautiful. But the Buckley and Edge Bar was considered ugly. But yet, when I looked at my skin, I looked like Buckley now. That, that's the group I look like. And I thought, well, if they're ugly and I look like them, I must be ugly too. For 35 years, I silently struggled with that. That's my sister. She, nobody never knew that I was going through that. You know what? As much as people say, Jerry, but you're so pretty, I can't receive it. Because I had put up a block in my mind. You got to start telling my babies in the middle how beautiful they are. So I didn't, so not only did I not feel, and you know what that what that is, I'm also feel that's the self-hate. I hated myself. I didn't told you. I hated the way I looked. I hated it. And no matter how people say I was pretty, I couldn't receive it. Because you know what? Because you can't get what you don't have. I didn't have that self-love. I didn't like dark skinned men. Because I didn't want anything to represent me. So, okay, so now I don't have love for myself. No matter how people try to love me, I couldn't get it. I couldn't receive it. Did you know that when you don't have love, you also can't receive it? You know, when people tell you that you're pretty, if you don't really feel that, if you don't have that about yourself, you can't receive it. So one day, now I got married, I, I, I had children, but it was always something missing. It was something missing in my life. One day, my daughter, when she was about um, five, six years old, we were riding in the car, we both remember this. And I think she's beautiful. This is my daughter's story. She'll be coming up next. She, so I thought she was very beautiful. So she said to me one day, Mom, she, she admired my dark skin. So she said, Mom, you are so beautiful. She said, I think you're so pretty. And I look just like you. In my sickness, in my self-hate. See, we don't know what we're doing to somebody else. I said, I looked over at her and I said, you don't look nothing like me. It wasn't personal. I was dealing with something. I had some problems. I had some issues. But what happened is, then in her mind, she thought, well, if my mother is beautiful and I don't look like her, then I must be ugly. Generation person is going pass it on down to her. Now, come on, we got to stop. We got to stop. That's why I'm our babies how beautiful they are. So, so then we're going through life, and I still don't know what's happening. And I know that we married with us three times. In the second chapter of my book, one of my husbands said, I want to make you happy, but I don't know how. You know, it took years to realize that he would have never been able to make me happy. Because what I needed, he couldn't make me. Not to my children. Not to the nice house we had on 53rd. I was out on, on 53rd Rhode Island. I had a house built, a two-story house built. Nobody could because it wasn't because it was all of me. So one day, I accepted Jesus in my life as my first mistake. So you know, one of the best ones. I accepted Jesus in my life as my first mistake. Because I cried out to God, God, help me. What's wrong with me? Why is it that I have such a hard time? Now, I was a mother. I mean, I took a trouble. But I didn't have that deep down love. You know what God said? He said, first of all, okay, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me talk to you, Jerry. Come on, let me talk to you. First of all, he said, 
have it. I made you in my hand. You are wonderfully and fearfully made. Everything you need is already in you. God told me, now I'm just about to here, he said, it's an insult. Just imagine if you gave your child a beautiful present and they said, I don't want it. That's an insult. God said, it's an insult for you to not like yourself when I made you. Everything you need is already there. You're beautiful just the way you are. I said, God, I didn't know. I'm sorry, I, didn't, I really didn't. I didn't know. So God said, now, I'm going to have to teach you how to love me so that you learn how to love yourself. All right. And you know what? When I start, when God start, when God start healing me, oh, y'all, my whole life changed. I think everybody, I see the beauty in you. I see the beauty in you. Beautiful just the way you are. You see, it, 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 God, God said he knew what he was doing. He didn't make no mistakes. That's right. So I'm just telling y'all, it's a lot of things right now that's going on in you. There's books in you. There's speaking games in you. God said, you know what? As black people, we got to start our business too. Right. Right. I mean, we got the ability to do it. Right. But we got to get out of this, you know. You know what? I started this book. I wrote this book. Like they said, with what I'm not to this day, I still don't type. <laughs> One thing. Hey, hey. It took me like two years. But, you know, this one. And the thing of this, these pictures, with a cell phone. See, don't say it's nothing impossible. All this lining up, this all this, I lined this up. Be best now tell you to go school for journalism. No. Because we, with God, all I can see, God told me to write a book. All I have to do is just line it up and go be. That's all, that's all He asked me to do. So I just wanted to share some things with you. Like I said, again, as speakers, we actually go out and we actually talk. But because we're trying to do something a little bit different here for this particular year, I'm going to kind of make it short. Now, I want to share a little bit about, about my daughter's book. Tori, Tori wrote a book. And, 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 as, and we, we have a puppy company now because we've gone through this now. So, I, it, although I have, you know, I lined up her book and did everything, I never read it because this was her book. So one day, about a month ago, her book only been out about a month. When I was reading, I said, let me read your book. And she, I had heard her say that, 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 that people have been reading her book in like two days or so. So I started reading her book, and I'm going to be honest with y'all. I was shocked. I was hurt. I was devastated. Mm -hmm. Now, come, she talked about me in her book. She really talks about me. I was, I was like, Tori, how could I support you when you make me look bad in your book? And then she said, People have been reading the book in two days. Yeah, because they're trying to figure out what other crazy things I've been doing. You know, they said, I mean, what, your mama looks crazy in this book. So, so what happened is, when she, when she, I started reading her book, and I was very hurt. But see, as a woman of God, we can't, we can't, you know, you can't treat people how you feel like they treat you. So I said, God, what should I do? So God showed me that, first of all, and then, of course, my sister, she also went to something that Tori had. She said, Jerry, I really don't think that it's like that. I think that you got the wrong understanding about the book. See, what happened is Tori was talking about her See, I thought I was helping her. When I was saying, you know, Tori, you need to let that guy alone. I see, because he's been there, done that, got a t-shirt. But when I thought I was helping her, what was happening is she was, in, see, like she was, in, and, and we went over and met his mama and, and his mama. Oh, he was, she was so nice. We all watched the movie. And then here comes the hashtag mama. You know, and I was like, wow. But what I had to realize is that she, this is the way she saw it. And it's okay because we did. So I decided, what are we going to do? Okay. We decided to now team up because we thought we were very close. I didn't have no idea. Some of that stuff that she said about me, I didn't know that she did up that much. So I said, okay, if she feels like that, it might be other ones that are going to me. Let's not talk about it. So we decided we're going to open up the door and we're going to allow so the sort of mother and other ones that are going to start talking about. So now I want to introduce to you guys my daughter. And then we'll come up just after Tori speak. We're going to also have QA. I love QA because I love to hear what everybody else has to say. So, so you guys, put your hands together for my daughter. <laughs> Yeah. 
have children or people that play now with good mother to my stepdaughter. I supported my husband. We had so much sex at one point he told me I was wearing him out. I was faithful <laughs> and committed to my husband and my marriage. And I basically went to church and I believed God was going to save my marriage. <laughs> then I realized I chose John out of my pain and my current circumstances. I made the choice to marry John with all flags, the flags were waving. I did not ignore them. I simply collected them thinking that I could change them. <laughs> um, I needed him. Well, I maybe I needed him, but I needed the love, the affirmation, and acceptance that he gave me. The pain I was dealing with was from my past. This my stepfather won't be not call it, one me against the closet door and beat me with a wave brush. Uh, and then my dad, he was absent, but I never questioned my love for his love for me. The Jehovah's Witness organization, uh, we decided. My mom and stepdad were a part of the Jehovah's Witness organization, so I have a, a lot of Bible knowledge, but no step up. So when I became, I'm sorry, when I became, when I became grown, when I became an adult, because of what my mom just shared with you about her being dark skin and her not having self love, she could not give me what she didn't have. So I had to grow up and try to figure it out. You know, I had to figure, I had to kind of, you know, so when you get up and you don't have a model to see, okay, what love looks like and what it doesn't look like, then, you know, you just kind of left hanging out there. You're just out there, you know, trying to figure it out. And now that she had been through three marriages and stuff, all I knew was that I didn't want to go through three marriages. But guess what? I've been through two. So when I hit 24, I had dated a guy, and we had uh, dated 10 years while I was in Midwood, and he was already graduated, but uh, we, we had 10 years, and he went to the Army 10 years later. He had, uh, we got back together, and two months later, we were married. And he warned me before we got married. He said, if it doesn't work out, we just get a divorce. He warned me. So four months later, guess what happened? We got a divorce. But four months, it's not enough time to figure it's going to work out. We were just getting to know each other. We had not even believe yet. Now, at first, and, and surely because we still didn't have a daddy. So he wasn't ready. You know what I'm saying? He, he wasn't ready to take on no, no, no wife. Then I turned around and, and, and got out of this situation, got married again. This time, the role my mother played, I'll talk about this in the book, and we're free. You know, we can talk about it now. But the role my mother played is that instead of her, you know, talking to me and embracing me and saying, hey, look, you know what? I see that this is not a good man for you. I see this is not, you know. But it was more, it came across more as comment. It came as comment. It wasn't, it wasn't in a love, loving manner. It wasn't in a, in a accepting manner. It was more in comment. So I was trying to like tell her to back off. You know, you try to say, Mom, back off. You know, say it. And then, oh uh, gosh, I keep forgetting. Let go and let God. You know, as parents, you have to say it. You have to say it because you want to know that I did tell her. You don't just see your child getting ready to go into a ditch and just let it happen. Oh, hey, I did. No, you don't do that. Love is, it's, you know, you let her know, hey, look, I see this is happening, but I love you. You're my daughter, so I love you. I don't like what you're doing. I don't like the situation. I already know where it's going, but I love you. Because if you don't do that, then they're left with the memory of what happens after that thing has passed. So the divorce is all over with. But my mom and I still had our issues because of how she treated me in it. I needed her to love me. I needed her to embrace me. I needed her to show me that it was going to be okay. It was many nights that I had wished that I could just go over to my grandmother's house. This is my aunt right here. I keep looking at her. But then, um, my grandmother's house, and I wanted her to, I just wanted to go in and lay, lay my head in her lap. Because it was just, you know, it was just, it was something I needed. And I was just, I was just battling, and I was battling, and I was battling. And the thoughts of suicide, people don't just want to commit suicide. They want to silence those voices. And I, I talk about, um, there's a girl named uh, Dayla Morrison, N-A-L-A-M-O-R. Did, did anybody see her, her video, her YouTube video? There's a girl named Dayla Morrison, and she's 17 years old, and she was trying to commit suicide. And she was taping it. The reason why we're able to see it is because she lived through it. But she took six bottles of pills. She was so 17 years old. She hasn't even started living yet. She hasn't even started living yet. But she had been great. You know, something's going on with her mother and then she was smart. You know, she was in some kind of school, but she was really smart. But some kind of way that love walk was it fell through. She fell through crack. So when she got with a boy and he told her he loved her, or you know, she got with him. First time he broke her heart, now boom, she's ready to miss suicide. That suicide thing, that 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 happened way before she got with him. You know, she 
was hurt before she got with him. He was just a straw that broke the camel's back. You know? And so that's why now my mom and I, we're talking about the love walk. We have to learn, especially as Christians. Because you know what? A lot of people say that Christians have the worst love walk of all. People don't want to go to church anymore because they scared of the ushers. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to sit out on here. You know, Y'all the first, you know, whoever's in here. Don't you the first person first? <laughs> you the first person we see. You know, we just smile, you know. We might be new, we might see her. Yeah. Friend and guards. Right. I wish you would just move out there. I got the seat ready waiting on you. <laughs> you know, I, I already minimized your name on this seat. You're going to see you better sit down. Because we're going to You know, but sometimes we just don't. That love walk, you have to learn how to love people. And then when it comes to the divorce. My ex-husband came from a line of divorce also. I came from a line of divorce. My ex-husband came. The we as a people as black community got to stop this generation of personal divorces. You know, how do we do that? We got to first of all figure out how we can love each other. How we, if I knew God's love for me, I would not have needed man. You know what I'm saying? I was raised over with witness, so I wasn't raised with love. I didn't know what love looked like. I knew what the Bible looked like. I knew what scripture looked like. You know, I can tell you anything about it. I go, I go, I was raised over with I go talk to anybody on scriptures. When you come to love, forget about it. You know, God I hate to slay me on you know. <laughs> But I'm saying now I'm having to learn how to love. I'm in counseling right now because I refuse to let my I do not refuse. But the best I can do, I don't want to pass this generation of person. Her her dad, her dad, and me both have a generation of persons of divorce. You know, it's got to stop somewhere. It's got to stop somewhere. I don't want them to uh, experience. You know, when, when these two things right here, if I was taking these right here and I glue them together and I let it dry, and if I try to take them apart, what's going to happen? One of yeah, one of them is going to rip. You know, divorce is, is, that is a tearing of your spirit. That's why God hates, he said hate. And you know, we thought we have to think God don't, we, no, he said I hate divorces. Because of what it does to that spirit. We have to know that first of all, you know, hey, I got to say, but my mom is vulnerable to fornication is so serious mm -hmm. that he talks against that too. You know, that is supposed to be something for him. Mm -hmm. That is a ministry when you, you cannot become more, more one than through your ministering to each other. Y'all catch me? So I'm saying, I don't want my children to, to, to go through this. So I have to figure out now how to love them and how to show My five-year-old, she's five. But when she was four years old, she was in pre-K. And the teacher called me their mom. They called me. What happened? We finished school your daughter. How did you get kicked out of, how did you get out of pre-K? Please, or what you do? You know, and I'm really on my way there. You know, like, you don't know, white people. Come on, I'm not, you know, not being insulted, but I'm saying black people taking fear. I guess I'm worth saying, you know. <laughs> okay, let me see what they're talking about. I get up there, my daughter had took her belt off and hit that little lady in the face with it. Why would a four year old be that mad? Right. You know what I'm saying? How? Do you, what kind of temper is that? But see, y'all find out what happened in, in the next book. <laughs> Thank you. 
we everywhere. And I just couldn't find it. Because when I go down to it, God had all the whole solution. But because I went to church one day and I got the condemnation, why did you get pregnant again anyway? What your didn't you know your marriage was already? So guess what? I stopped going to church. I don't want to hear that. You know what I'm saying? Because when I'm away from y'all and I you know, I still gotta hear those words in my head tonight when I come home, I, the devil's gonna replay them. He's gonna replay them. That's why people are committing suicide. That's why they don't they don't want to kill themselves. They want to silence those voices. And they're tired. They're tired. And you don't want, you know, you want to feel loved. You want to feel accepted. You want to know that I am good enough. You know, that I am lovable. That I am. You know what I'm saying? That's that's what you're supposed to do as parents. We are supposed to love our children. And my ex-husband didn't get that either. So both of us are trying to figure this out together. And we just, bam. Next thing I know, I'm in jail. You know, I've never been in jail before. My mom never been in jail. Hey, you you know, so I'm saying we just have to, you know, we have to love each other. We have to figure out a way to ask God to teach me how to love. Teach me how to love. Come on, come on, come on. You have to, we have to figure out a way to ask God to, because if you, if your mother didn't do it for you, then you might not even know that you're not even being loving. My mom didn't know she wasn't loving me until she read the book, and I, she was like, Tori, what? I said, Mom, I have been talking to you. I have been telling you. I have been saying, but you weren't listening. You know, you hear that so she, she, sometimes we don't listen. 